Hey, what's up, guys? This is World Series G, and I'm back with a new MLB The Show 20 video for you today. Today, we're breaking down Stage 3 Team Affinities. We're reviewing all 30 teams, all of the cards. I'm going to give my opinions from what I've seen so far. It's only been a day and what I've played with, but we're going to get into that. But before we do, be sure to follow the Instagram. Everybody loves the show. Follow the Twitch. I promise you I'm going to get to streaming. I promise you. See, I got the new chair. I'm ready. I'm ready. I promise you. For all you guys that have followed and I have been dead on stream, I'm coming. I'm coming. And also, just make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on the YouTube. Please. It's very helpful and thankful. And I'll definitely appreciate it. Be sure to leave a comment on who you think your favorite card is or anything. Just, you know video related but let's just get into it stage three team affinity had the market going bonkers yesterday you know i love talking market and the market was just bonkers because all of the stage three team affinity cards are not only sellable on the market so you can now buy every single one of them every single one's available not a ton of 99s but they're there you can also prestige them. So their value is all over the place. You don't have to grind for them. If you're a big stub man and you want a card, you can just go buy them. You don't even have to finish your team affinity. Look at all of these prestigeable cards that are now available. Anybody that was trying to prestige every card in their game, good luck. Because I don't think it's possible anymore with all of these cards. But let's just get into team affinity stage three. If you don't know already, you gotta you gotta grind from stage one all the way to stage three. So you gotta go. If you don't have any, you gotta start from zero, and you get awards as you go along. Crazy rewards, crazy rewards. But and then you get to your card for each team. So let's just get into. We're gonna break them down. We're gonna start with the Baltimore Orioles. Their stage three team affinity card is Jim Palmer. 98 overall, the pitch mix is, is eh, fastball, slow curve, slider, two seam change up, good per nines, that's why he's a 99, he's got a funky delivery, but Jim Palmer's never been like a super ace type of pitcher at the top of your rotation, depending on what level you play on, he might be solid for you, and if you're an Orioles fan, obviously you want one of the greatest pitchers of all time on your team. And you can, you can work with him. I don't think he's going to be a stud, like, ace-type guy. This is not, like, a competition for Kluber or anything like that. Solid card. I personally wouldn't put him in my rotation. But if you're a fan and the you think the pitch mix works for you, go for it. Be my guest. High stamina. That's, that's huge, huge, huge. After that, we're going to go to Boston. Boston's is Dwight Evans. Solid card. Solid, solid card. Can play all outfield positions and first base, which is huge. 88 power against right, 98 power against left, 89 contact, <clears throat> 116 contact against left. High discipline, so your check swings are not going to be called, which is huge because we all check swing a lot. The fielding is outstanding. 94 fielding. 99 arm strength. The reaction's a little iffy, also considering the fact that he's got doesn't have the greatest speed. But if you prestige this card, he's got 97. His reaction goes up to 85. He's have 69 speed. But solid card, maybe not the best option. If you're a Red Sox fan and you've gotten through Red Sox team of three, definitely go for it. I mean, definitely looks like a card worth trying out at least. New legend in the game this year. Yankees is Donnie Baseball, Donnie Mattingly. I played against him last night. He took me deep. Did not realize he has outfield secondary, which is interesting. Really good glove at first base, obviously. The speed at 40 is going to be rough in the outfield, and I think there's just better options in the outfield in general. The Yankees have 8,000 players you can use. It's a solid card. He's going to rake 
if you're a guy who likes contact more in your lineup than because you need the bigger PCI than power, I say definitely go for this card. This card would definitely be better when he's prestige because then he'll be 80 on both sides. 83 power, 80 power against right and 83 power against left. High vision, so he's going to be really tough to strike out. That outside PCI is going to be huge. You're going to foul off everything and annoy guys. Solid card. Obviously not the best first baseman here. There's a ton of first basemen. You're going to really notice that like after you go through all these cards, if you're looking for the most competitive guys, Mattingly isn't technically that guy. Speaking of first baseman, go to another first baseman. Tampa Bay Rays, Fred McGriff. Fred McGriff, 98 overall. The power is there. I like power on my team personally. Power seems to be the meta for the game this year. You want your miss hits or your good goods to kind of fly a little bit deeper. And this guy's going to have that power. 98 against right, 102 against left. So he's got the, I guess you can say, reverse splits when it comes to power. The contact's higher against right. He's at 114 and 99 contact against left. Fielding is solid. 70 fielding at first base. Doesn't have any secondaries, obviously. I don't think Fred McGriff played anywhere other than first base. 70, what's that? It gives you a silver shield, so he's not terrible. That's pretty much all you need at first base. If you've got Rays filled up, you could go after this Fred McGriff card. Blue Jays, Team Affinity is a new one. I'm not going to lie to you. I never heard of this guy until yesterday. Tom Hankey. The stats look crazy on this card. For a reliever, 125 Ks per nine. That PCI is going to be tiny. 99 mile an hour fastball, so that's gonna be able to get up to 101. He doesn't have outlier, but he's still getting it up over to over 100. Fork ball at 92. Wish it was a little bit slower in my opinion, just looking at the card, but <clears throat> I think this card is probably everything we wish Kirby Yates could be. Like, Kirby Yates kind of has the same pick mix. He's more of a, it's a splitter instead of a fourth ball. But the high velocity is going to definitely make a lot of guys struggle. And he's big. He's 6'5", so he's going to get on top of you. And those per nines are ridiculous. Definitely, obviously, the best relief pitcher out of the Team Affinity because I think he's the only relief pitcher in Team Affinity. But he's definitely worth a try to go after, especially if, you don't have the subs to go buy a Dibble or a Chapman. The Mo is out, but you might not have him yet. Definitely, this is a card you should probably put in your pen if you don't have if you don't have a budget squad. Free, or even if he's not free, he's cheaper than the the other options you could put in your pen right now because most of the best relievers are either somewhere behind a uh, collection like Billy Wagner or super expensive like Rob Dibble or, or Roldis Chapman. So, and you definitely need multiple bullpen arms. So this guy is definitely worth a shot if you don't have a super stacked pen. So that's the AL East. I guess because they're going through by East. They're doing East as opposed to, um, what do you call it, leagues. Kind of like how we're doing in real life baseball this year. I don't know if that was on purpose, but that's what they're doing. So let's just move over to the NL East and let's look at the, the Braves. John Smoltz, 99 overall, Hall of Famer. Overall, really good card. Ugh. I just don't like the pitch mix. There's so many guys with sinkers and cutters, and for you to, for him to only have the four-seam fastball, doesn't even have a two-seam fastball, despite being a 99, I really don't think he's going to play the way he needs to play. He's got 91 control, so hopefully that helps so he can pinpoint those pitches. But anyone who plays like plays a lot knows that having those having that cutter and that sinker is huge on a pitcher because it just able to get that weak contact. If a guy's sitting on a heater, you're gonna have a hard time just blowing it by him all the time. I mean he's got an array of off speed pitches, he's got a splitter and a changeup and a curveball and the slider. So he's got it. I think he can be, he can definitely be viable, but I just wish he had a cutter. 
somewhere, somewhere there was a cutter for him. He just unfortunately doesn't have a cutter. I don't know. I mean, it's just tough. But he's definitely going to be a good card. Wouldn't be the first guy I'd go after. Here we got the Miami Marlins, A.J. Burnett. I like this card more than I like John Smoltz. Let's just be honest with you. I haven't seen either of them play. But Burnett's sinker, I think, makes him more viable than John Smoltz. His per nines aren't as great, though. That walked per nine, so he's going to be more wild. But he throws 97. That's going to get up to 99 with the knuckle curve. He also has a funky motion, which is tough to pick up at times. So I think Burnett is definitely one to go after. I think he definitely would be good. That sinker, that sinker is going to get up to 97. It's going to be a hard pitch to hit. It's going to change speeds with the knuckler. 109 Ks per nine. The break is 99 also. So he's going to be tough to hit, man. Tough, tough, tough. Now here's a card I actually own and can tell you about. Mets fan here, so I had to get out lighter. This card, I thought, had the potential to be nasty. He just didn't do it for me in the first start. I'm going to give him another try because I think that sinker and cutter is going to be dirty. But when I looked at his pitch mix more, he doesn't have a changeup, which is a great pitch for cutters this year. I don't know why. I mean, not cutters, sinkers. If a guy has a sinker and a changeup, they basically look the same. So it's an awesome pitch to work off of. Guys like Lodolo and Kluber are amazing because of the fact that their changeups look like sinkers out of the hand. And he doesn't have it. He also doesn't throw super hard. And his slider is not even slow enough to really miss, miss bats too much. It's sinker at 93, cutter at 90, slider at 87. There's no real pitch. There's really no speed differential. And the, the curveball is slow, but if a guy can see curveball out of the hand, he can wait back a little bit more than he can on a changeup. So I'm honestly disappointed in this card. I thought this card would be like the best card out of this setup, out of this whole stage three pitch starting pitcher-wise. But so far, he didn't do it for me in his debut. We'll give him another try. Maybe he'll change. But right now, I'm really iffy on lighter. So after the bets, we can go to the Phillies here. And this card here, if you look at the market, I believe he's the most expensive card on the market. And to be honest with you, I I can kind of see why. I personally love Chipper Jones. I personally love him. I think he's the best third baseman in the game because of his offense. But until Chipper gets a 99... This, this Mike Schmidt card is the best third baseman in the game. 85, 87 contact against right, 108 contact against left, 106 power against right, 112, 122 power against left. And when you prestige them, he's going to hit 125 power against left-handers. Completely left-handed masher. But besides that, he is... Look at the defense, 95 fielding, 95 arm strength, 94 accuracy, 91 reaction. Not only is the bat ridiculous, the defense is ridiculous too. And when you prestige him, all of that is going up three. So he's going to have 98 fielding with 98 arm strength, 94 reaction. This card, is pro this card right now is the best third baseman in the game. It's not really even a question, honestly. The only thing about Chipper Jones is that he's a switch hitter, but the stats don't show Chipper's not even that good of a defender. Like this, this card right here is probably going to be the best third baseman in the game until Chipper Jones shows up. But I don't know if his stats are going to be even be as good offensively as this Schmidt card. This Schmidt card is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Definitely a card to go after. He will be on... He's, might be a, and he might be the end game third baseman. Like I don't know. Unless Chipper comes, it's either him or Chipper. I think if you get Mike Schmidt right now, you will never have to get another third baseman for the rest of the year. And I can't say that about a lot of these cards, but this one, 
I think for a fact, you're perfectly fine with Mike Schmidt playing third base into January. So after Schmidt, let's get out of the East. Last card is the Nationals, and that is Andre Dawson. Five-tool center fielder. The stats speak for itself. 102 contact, 108 contact against left, 84 power, 96 power against left, high vision at 101. The defense, 93 fielding, 97 arm strength, 85 speed. He's going to go and get it. Definitely going to go get it. Prestige, he's going to be even better. That speed's going to get up to 88. The fielding's going to be to 96. Solid 5-2 card. It doesn't blow you away with any of his stats, but there's not a weakness in his game. And he's got over 80 on both sides, so the power is going to play. So we're out of the East. And let's go to the Central. Let's go to the White Sox. Paul Conerco. I've heard good things about this card. I've heard this card is underrated at first base. It's tough. First base is crowded, crowded, crowded position. But heard he's got a smooth swing and the bat plays. Because this card is all bat, no defense, 60 fielding. But he's at first base, so there's no real worries when it comes to that. 96 power, 96 contact against right, 107 contact against left, 95 power against right, 106 power against left. The bat's going to play. Not the most spectacular bat, but I think if you're on your way to Chicago, the White Sox already, or you're just a fan of the White Sox, and you're closer to Conerco than some of the other first basemen, I think you're perfectly fine with this card. Also, that being said, you can pretty much buy any card you want. So there's also that. But if you are cheap and don't want to spend your stubs, you can definitely grind out Conerco. Speaking of first baseman, though, this is the one. I was super hyped when this card dropped. And from the day one reviews, this card does not disappoint. 95, 99. Jim Tomey, 125 power against right. This card demolished me when I faced him. Took me deep twice. Already hearing good things. People say they love the swing on this card. It's either him or David Ortiz, honestly. Ortiz's power plays better against left. So there's that. But he's way cheaper on the market than David Ortiz. And if you need to allocate stubs... If you can save yourself, who you know, like 80, 90,000 stubs to use on other players, I think this is the better choice, honestly, with this Tommy card. Can play third base. Wouldn't advise you to play him there, obviously. The fielding's not even great for a first baseman, but if you're in a pinch and you need somebody to play third base and not be an automatic error, you can put Tommy there, but he's pretty close to that also. Ridiculous card, definitely one to go after. Tigers. Al K-Line. This card is really slept on. This is another crazy card. A lot of people just haven't had haven't done the Tigers. So it's going to be hard to get this K-Line if you're just grinding. Again, you can just buy him on the market. Right now, he's going for 45, 43K. Kind of expensive, I would say. I don't think you should spend more than 40K on any of these cards. If you do, you might as well... Just grind it out unless you're at stage one. But yeah, this card, last year this card was criminally underrated. This card got no respect, played outstanding defense in the outfield. Right now, look at this card, right? 96 fielding can get up to 99 when prestige. 93 arm strength, the power is going to play at 87 and 95. High contact, high vision, high discipline. This card is nasty. This card will be nasty. And you can play him at first base in a pinch. If you don't think the speed works. This is a really good card. And a card, I think, again, is going to get overshadowed by just the team he plays for. And just the other cards he's accompanied with. Here, for the Royals, we got George Brett. This card looks a lot like his card last year. That card slapped his 99 overall card. I think this card is going to be just as good. I think he's got a little more power than that card had last year with the 85 and 80 on both sides. So perfect, perfect should get out. Don't don't tell me that they, I can't guarantee you they will, but they should. 123 contact, 114 contact against left. High vision, solid defense at 85. 
Really good card. Definitely a good card at third base. Not the best third baseman you can get out of these cards. We already had that discussion. But he's definitely cheaper than Schmidt, I'm pretty sure. I think Chipper is better, but that's just me. Let's go to the Twins here. Twins <laughs> team affinity is Harmon Killebrew. I think of Harmon as a first baseman, even though he's a third base primary. Because the defense is pretty crappy. But the bat plays as a first baseman. When this card is prestige, he has 124 power against right. 125 power against left. I would never, I never want to face this card on All-Star. This card on All-Star will probably hit 500 and just drop tanks in the hands of the right, of the right player. That power is ridiculous. I would never want to see this card on All-Star. You've got to... You've got to face this card on Hall of Fame or higher because this card is just going to demolish pitchers on All-Star. The power is ridiculous on this card. This card is all about his power. The defense doesn't even matter because he's just putting tanks over the fence. Kind of think of like, uh, what was the card? The Pete Alonzo Homer and Derby card last year. It's similar to that. Next, go through the... Cubs here. Cubs stage three is Kerry Wood. We know what Kerry Wood is. Velocity. 122 Ks per nine is ridiculous. That's that's reliever type number like stats. When you get into the 120s, you're talking about Chapman, that Hanky card, Dibble. Those are cards that are supposed to come in and get Ks, and you're getting that from a starting pitcher. He kind of looks like a reliever in a starting pitcher form, obviously, because he's got the he struggles with the command with the high per nines. He's gonna get the fastball over to 101. Not gonna lie to you, I faced this card in my game to get to World Series. The fastball plays. The fastball plays, and the way to pitch with this card is to pitch off of the fastball. My opponent threw a lot of off-speed pitches thinking I'm going to sit on fastball, but that fastball plays. If you establish the fastball with this card, all of the other off-speed is going to be ridiculous. So this card, my opponent, opponent didn't play well with this card, but if you establish heater, you pound the heater early on, get the guy to start cheating on the fastball, and then start using the breaking pitches, that guy's going to have a really hard time. You, your opponent's going to have a really hard time against this carry wood card. It's just like his 95 last year. His 95 last year was one of the best pitchers in the game because of that fastball. His other spe pitch speeds are so far off. His cutter is 91. If you establish a fastball that's hitting 100 and start throwing cutters at 91, it's basically like a slider because you're just going to see fastball and be too early every single time. This card is going to be nasty. Definitely one to go after. <clears throat> Next, my personally my favorite card out of this pack. Stage 3 Team Affinity for the Reds. Eric Davis. 5-2 Monster. The contact's not great. But the swing is good. The power is there. The speed is there. The fielding's there. This card, I just, I don't know why. I loved his silver card at the beginning of the year. He was my leadoff hitter for like the first three weeks of the season. And the speed, he moved Mantle to left field. That's how much I love his card. He goes and gets everything in center field. He's really good. I Definitely a card to recommend to go get. All right, let's hurry up before we're here for an hour talking about these cards. Let's get to the Brewers. Robin Yount. My personal opinion on Yount is blah. Like... The, nothing like I don't really like robbing out the card in general and this card is very just you know just very uh he's also toolsy which means his hitting's not gonna stand out doesn't have power against lefties <clears throat> fielding is good at shortstop <clears throat> to get diamond and he can play the outfield a little bit in a pinch solid defender solid bat not the type of card I like I want some more power in my lineup not really a card I'm going to go after too much. Let's get to the Pirates team affinity. Jason Kendall. Another card I personally don't like. 
I like my guys with power. Some people really like his swing. They like the swing on his so his gold card that he had early in the year. And that card I never even touched. I saw 23 power and I had flashbacks of hitting perfect, perfect fly balls that went 300 feet to the center fielder. So I wanted no parts of a card with 23 power. But some people really liked him. If you're a guy that likes contact hitters, I, from what I'm hearing, I think you should probably go after Kendall, especially catcher's not super deep, even though Posey's free. And that's probably the guy you should have if you don't have, if you're not trying to spend money on a catcher. You can't go wrong with Posey. But if you like Kendall, I definitely think you should give him a try if you like contact hitters. Cardinals team of Finney, let's go. Lou Brock. I'm a fan of Lou Brock. The speed is there. He's got a good slap swing. I think the card gets a little more pop than, he sh than the stats show. But we know why you get this card. You get this card for the speed. Only issue with this card is I don't think he plays as good a defense even than his stats show. The 99 speed's going to play, but he gets kind of funky animations. He got funky animations last year. This year, in a couple games I saw him, he had some more funky animations too. So I would, that would keep me away from getting him, but probably the best bench bat. Not really bench bat, but like speed demon. You have the Ricky Henderson. I mean, imagine. So it's Ricky Henderson's free, so you can go with either of those cards. I think... Having Lou Brock's a little bit better because you're most likely going to face a right-handed guy if you need him to hit in a pinch. But as a pinch runner, boom. Definitely should probably be on your team just to be a pinch runner because the bat will still get you some base hits. Now let's get to the West. We're going to go to the Angels here. New legend, Tim Salmon. The bat plays not one of the better cards that you can use. The fielding's bad, and he can't play first base. But the bat plays. Can be a bench pat. Obviously, if you're an Angels fan, you want to get Tim Salmon. Come on, man. New le Angels legend? Why not? But not not a great choice. Not Obviously, not someone you should go after right away. Even though I'm very close to getting him. And I probably will get him very soon. Catfish Hunters from the A's. Another starting pitcher that just kind of struggles from just not having a great pitch pitch repertoire. Fastball, slider, changeup, curveball, two-seamer, very basic pitch mix. The 98 uh, walks per nine is going to be excellent. I think this card can be really good on All-Star, though, because he doesn't even throw super hard on All-Star. And on All-Star, you kind of want the opposite of what you want on Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame, you want velocity because of the pitch speeds. On, on um, All Star, you want slower. Th you want guys who don't throw as hard because of the pitch speeds. Because it's so slow, you kind of want to slow guys' bats down even more. And because his fastball is at 93, that's not really hard to begin with. And he's got a 76 mile an hour curveball and changeup. I think you can be really effective with him if you kind of throw a lot of off speed pitches and just keep guys off balance so they can't just take their time and hit fastballs. So I think this card is a really good card to use on All-Star. Because of the per nines, you want to try to shrink the PCI as much as possible. And you really don't want flamethrowers on on All-Star. You want guys that kind of can keep you off balance. So after it just go to the Mariners team of Finney and Jay Buhner. This is a card I really like. His 95 Signature Series card last year was criminally underrated. I used him a lot for no reason because you, the, with the amount of out, outfield options there are, you should never really need a Jay Buhner, but he is really good. The pop plays, the power plays, 108, 116. Don't, the contact is good enough. The arm is ridiculous and the defense is solid. 85 defense. Like, really good bat. Really good bat. If you have better defenders in the outfield, you can use them, but that bat plays. That bat could definitely be on anybody's bench. Next, we're going to go to Texas and Michael Young. I just have a, I just have an affinity for Michael Young. I've always liked Michael Young growing up. He's 
not the best card in this game. Like this kick, the way this game plays, you really don't want contact hitters that don't have speed. He's basically a contact hitter with no speed. So he's not really the best player competitive wise, but I had to get him because I just like Michael Young and I already had Texas pretty much done. Plays all around the infield, so he's got infield versatility. When you uh, when you prestige him, you can get that power over 80 against the right-handers, so that's very helpful. Solid defense at 85, so he probably won't drop below gold, maybe at third base. I'm not 100% sure, but he's going to stay around gold everywhere. Solid card. Doesn't really play the way the, the meta of the game plays, but... If you're a Rangers fan or just a fan of Michael Young like I am, randomly, definitely go after him. He's definitely not going to ruin your team. Let's go to the Astros. Astros team affinity is Jeff Bagwell. The bat plays. That is what he's here for. He's here to hit. Solid defender, too. Don't really have much of a review on him because I never really played with his, his 99 last year. Not a card that I'm super enticed on getting this year. So I'm just going to pretty much go off the stats, the bat plays, and he's a solid defender. Actually, I lied. I used his 91 in showdown in the card rake. So, but that's obvious. You can look at the stats and know that Jeff Bagwell rakes. That's what he's going to do. Probably not the best first base option, but if you're an Astros fan, go for him. Next, we're going to go Arizona Diamondbacks. Their team of finish stage three is Matt Williams. Solid third baseman. But we already discussed other third basemen <laughs> like Mike Schmidt and George Brett. I don't think he's better than either of them. Not really saying much. Both of those guys are 99 overall. He's 97. But Matt Williams has always been a really good card in this game. Like He's a solid card, but he just kind of gets overshadowed by the other options in the game. But he's a good card. You can definitely use him if you need him or if you're close to getting... If you've got Arizona almost done... I definitely think you won't be wrong with him in your lineup. He's going to mash lefties. Can definitely hit right-handers. His stats are actually a little bit better than Chipper Jones, if you look at it. But I like the switch hitter. If you're a fan of switch hitters, I definitely think Chipper Jones is better. I'm just a huge fan of Chipper Jones, despite the fact he ruined much of my childhood as a Mets fan. He's just so good. Let's move on. Colorado Rockies, stage four, stage three. Dante Bichette, he's basically a bench bat. Bringing the tough lefty, you want to him, have him off the bench. You're never really going to want to put him in the field because just not good defense, not good defense. But if you want to have him in the outfield and have the reunion with Larry Walker, it's 100% possible right now. So I wouldn't tell you not to go get Dante Bichette. He's definitely viable. Like most of these cards, I mean, I'm, we're, we're discussing cards that are 97 to 99 overall. Nobody cannot have a 97 on their bench. Like, these are all cards that can find a way on someone's lineup. No one looks at all of these cards and go, nope, can't play them. Can't play them ever. These are all really good cards. We're just kind of breaking down which is the best. Here is one of my faves. <clears throat> Potentially could be the second best pitcher in the game. Potentially. I don't want to make a crazy statement. I made my crazy hot take. Mike Schmidt's the best third baseman in the game and might be the best third baseman for the rest of the year. I'm not going to go as far as saying Oral Hershiser is the second best pitcher in the game behind Kluber, but he could possibly be. His per nines aren't great, but the pitch mix is excellent. He might throw a little too slow, which is why I'm a little iffy on him. But his sinker is devastating. It is probably one of... It's him, Kluber, Lodolo. Those guys' sinkers are otherworldly. His gold is tough to hit. So I can imagine what a 98 looks like. He's just got a devastating sinker, and I think that's what's going to play for this card. And it's going to definitely be a card you need to go after and get. I'm not done with the Dodgers team affinity, but I own Oral Hershiser. That's the one of the cards I actually spent my actual stubs to buy. Because I this card needs to be in a ro my rotation. So, 
if you if there's a guy I tell you to spend stubs on, it would be Oral Hershiser. Let's go to the Padres. Two left. Wow, we've been here for a while. Tony Gwen. Power, if you like contact and speed, go get him. I hope this card plays like his card last year. His card last year was ridiculous. He was literally a day one to end year card because you could get him in the in the level up pack from going from bronze to silver and so on and so forth. And I know some people who literally had him as soon as you could get him first pick and never took him out of their lineup because that card was so good. If he's any if his swing is anything like it was last year, they had crazy pop. This could be another really sneaky good card to get. On the surface, you kind of scared because the power is not great, but there are some cards that just get glitchy pop, like uh, like Mondesi. So if he's had a good swing like that, he could be he could be end game honestly. And the last, I'm not gonna say, but not least, because he is kind of least. Juan Marichal. His stuff, his stats look good, but he's never been good. And he just throws too much slow stuff. There's nothing... His stuff doesn't really work off of each other. Like, you want your starting pitchers to have pitches that you can kind of sequence. And he's fastball and then slow. Those guys are really easy to time up because if you don't see fastball, you know I'm going to wait back. Even if it's a screwball or a curveball changeup. The slider helps a little bit, but it's still not a really hard slider. So you still can see, like, okay, it's a fastball, looks slow. He's got really good per nines, so you should be able to command, but I just don't, I don't think the card is going to play, honestly. I just don't believe so on it. It's like, it's just not, not as good as his stats should say. But it, be my guest, if you're a Giants fan, go give him a try. Like I said, all of these cards are really good, and all of these cards, honestly, are worth the try. So, this has been a really long video. I appreciate if you actually stayed and watched this whole video from start to finish. I didn't realize I was going to talk so much, but I really wanted to break down every single one of these cards. Because they aren't available on the markets. So, like, you can go buy them. And I don't want you wasting your stubs on a guy, you know. Or just, you can grind them. And I think you should know which ones you should try to go after first. My top three, I would say, is Jim Tomey, Oral Hershiser, and damn, I forgot who the third one was. Oh, Mike Schmidt. Like, if you're gonna go get, if you're gonna go spend stubs on cards to have them right away, I think you should go after this Mike Schmidt. Go get that Jim Tomey card, even though I haven't gotten either of them because I'm stubborn. And go get the Oral Hershiser card. I think those are the three standouts from this pack. Even though there's a lot of other really good cards that we already discussed. I think those might turn out to be the best three cards out of the pack. In the comments, let me know what you think. Again, sorry for being really long. But we just had to discuss every single one of these cards, man. Just had to. Other than that, <clears throat> be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And this is World Series G signing out. Peace.